okie dokie, okie dokie. Welcome to Loretta Nash. Yeah, Loretta Nash. The Loretta Nash Show or Laura's Block. Uh, I'm fiddling around with this today. Today is Monday, August the 7th, 2023. Interesting about today. And pretty much what I want to do is basically do say pretty much what I do most most Mondays anyway. Okay. Well, I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. The alarm goes off. It plays, um, of all things, it plays um, a skillet song. A uh, skillet, if y'all don't know, is a Christian uh, or a Christian group. They may not produce anything anymore, but um, the, they have a group. So I listen to um, You Are the One. Um, I could look it up, but I don't really want to right now. I just want to sit and, you know, think about stuff and all. I got my, um, little microphone on my neck, uh, that I, my husband wanted. He wanted it years ago and we didn't have the money for it, but. I went ahead and bought it for him, which I did that a lot. Uh, he wanted something, and I would um, break down and get it, even though we, he knew we didn't have it. We didn't have, we're just barely getting by. I mean, not to say anything wrong with barely getting by, but that's all we could do. I mean been like that for for all my life so I really don't know any better I mean uh, we didn't realize how poor out of retrospect I don't didn't know how poor we actually really were was because it was my life I knew we couldn't get things if you hadn't been listening we didn't know you know couldn't get things that certain people got got and everything but it didn't matter to me as long because us being very religious or attempt to be very religious it really didn't matter and so um growing up that way and of course i didn't know that our house our house was so uh divergent I mean didn't know well I knew my dad had depression but I didn't know it was really bad until he finally got diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and, and but we had to live with it and then of course my mom you know apparently she is bipolar I know private stuff and really shouldn't be saying things like that and everything and then my little brother got diagnosed with having autism and that explains a lot so you know and I didn't like going to um, psychiatrists and stuff but you know growing up we had to family me family this and all that you know because to ha help my dad with his depression and all most of the time we couldn't because we were at school but now that we got older and then I had to of all things that lived with them for a bit there because my husband got he moved away, moved away because he wanted to go to the school and so for the three years there, I lived, uh, me and my daughter, we lived with, down there with my dad. And my dad, my mom, my little brother, and, and then me and my, me and my daughter. 
Yeah, our names uh, were beforehand. When we got down there, we didn't really have to bring a, a mattress or anything, and they really didn't have us anywhere for us to sleep. And, you know, my daughter being, what, 10, 11? She was like, just started to get, was about to start in the third grade. And, um, but granted, granted it was a, a okay time, even though it was just a living, I hate to say it, because my, it just, it was just not good. And lately for the past, okay, let me get clarified. Um, it's not that way anymore. I do the best that I can with what I got. Okay. Um, last week, my car decided the clutch wanted to die. So, having no income come in to fix it, even though I spent all the money I had for a wreck I had insurance but the that insurance money it had to go catch the bills up and everything and so a little worm little false worm got implanted into people that would try to help or could help wouldn't do it won't do it because uh, they remember something that happened 30, 40 years ago, and would, would would deny me it, and that's, you know, sometimes that's my problem. I hadn't worked in, in three years, I mean, at a regular job, well, yeah, it was three years in June, uh, March, it was three years, whenever, was it three or two? March 2021 is when I gave up on the job, but of course, if I count the, the pandemic, then it would be three years, but no, 2020, when they opened the schools back up, I went back to the schools, the only schools I went to were the ones that I was allowed to, because the others I got I'm not really sure how I got banned from them, but I got banned from them because I guess I wasn't doing right. You know, one one school, one junior high I got banned from because I, I got lied about because apparently I, I, I don't know those two. I really don't know why. And then I just decided, you know, I could get the fingerprints and go back to doing substitute, but it didn't matter anyway because they, they wouldn't send me to the, the high school or to the junior highs. They'll send me to the elementary schools. And I didn't mind working at the elementary schools. It's just the, the no, they were certain um, schools that. Apparently, I'm a, pro a product of, of society because of my ethnicity and all. Um, talking about, you know, going off on that in a tangent, I guess. Oh, I could. Anyway, I, I really do know and still really don't know. Well, I just got to work with what I got, and lately I just can't, you know, work normal like I, I did, and then I'm overqualified for these jobs, I'm underqualified for these jobs, and I can't get a, a warm body job, is because if I get a warm body job, then somebody will come in and, and automatically see, remember, or do something, and the next thing I know, I don't got the job anymore. They got this thing around here 
that, you know, you get probate, probate, three months probation. That's all you really get. Is whatever job you get, you got three months probation. I was lucky enough that the other jobs I had, the three months probation turned into X many years. And the only reason why it did is because, you know, besides being a warm body, I was actually doing work. Uh, I, um, anyway, I just, I used to do this talk on the radio and stuff, but I got out of habit. Radio, huh? That's what we used to call it back in the 80s when we would go and buy some cassette tapes and we just sit there and just, if we could find the time and didn't have everybody else walking in on us or or having an argument that's what we would do is just push record or play record and play all the things sometimes we would actually spend hours on the red on the radio listening to a radio station and actually pull the hit the, the song when it was playing on the radio I used to do that a lot. I used to have a lot of mistakes. But, uh, of course, uh, electronics and stuff got where I couldn't, you know, afford it anymore. And then technology advanced. So a lot of the, the stuff I have, you know, are gone. And I did. And, um, and music appreciation. I know, I'm shooting off everywhere. I'm just brainstorming and shooting all kinds of stuff off. And um, when I took music appreciation in college, you know, I took band, and we had to have music appreciation in college, so I went and took it, because it was a requirement, so I took it, and the uh, teachers, uh, you know, had us to be supposed to copy the tape, and I didn't memorize that tape. And so I get of all these four seasons, I get them slightly mixed up because you had to listen to the whole thing. And I kindly get them mixed up because what we were supposed to do was uh, flip them and, and put them in there right on our tape version, but I didn't do that. Or I did it, or I didn't do it right. I don't know. All I know is of all of these four seasons, I get my seasons mixed up. And I don't know if spring comes first or fall comes first. Uh, because the professor said that he switched them. But that was that class was an easy A. Oh, uh, I just would sit sometimes, just sit there and listen to the music. Um, yeah, I like the music. I mean, it started out with the tribal stuff, and then it goes all the way up to whatever he had for that time in, when I took it, 90, 90, yeah. Whatever bits and pieces I got to up to the 90. But our family always listened to music all the time. Mainly the reason why my mom kept the music on is sometimes we weren't even allowed to have the TV on. And it was mainly just for the no noise. That's what the TV was for, was just for noise. And then we only had, what, Channel 3, Channel 5, Channel 10, and then maybe 2430. That was it. But that was all our... All Oh yeah, 13. I forgot 13 was in there somewhere. So, you know, living in the 80s. Uh, so when the eight, 1980 came, I was 10. 10, what grade would be in 10? Uh, fourth grade? Fourth, fifth grade. I don't remember if, uh, when we had the, I only remember it's Christmas. I don't remember if it was fourth, fifth grade when we had that wreck or 
all in it. Remember, it was Christmas. Almost lost my eye. Yeah, talking about almost things happening. They've always been almost happening a lot. According to some of the stories my mom had, I I almost got kidnapped twice. Yeah, I know. You don't look like you can get kidnapped. Well, I looked like, I don't know, some dude. I kind of remember him. I kind of remember the car. And you call, have to call him uncle, and he was no kin to us. And he thought that I was his uh, granddaughter. Because my mom looked like his daughter, even though my mom was not his daughter. I mean, when we lived out in Arizona, that's, you know, there was a lady that looked just pretty much like my mama. And so, and then almost got kidnapped again. Don't remember that one, but that's what my mom said. And everything was always easier for my sister. So it seemed. Her, her dark hair and her green eyes. Her blue-green eyes. Yeah, we got blue-green eyes. <laughs> not, not green. Not like plant green. Or the, like, I'm watching Farscape. Not the lady with the, the fake contact eyes. That green and yellow. We got yellow eyes, uh, green eyes. Did all the research and stuff and found out pretty much who it came from. Yeah, doing family research is. It's only been, it ain't even been 20 minutes in the. This and I'm just rambling on all about all kinds of stuff. <sighs> yeah, everybody lately has been saying that I need to go to therapy. Go to therapy, go to therapy. Well, yeah, that's the big thing now is therapy, 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 therapy. Well, I didn't like the idea of therapy in the first place. My husband didn't like it either. Because he had to, since he had to grow up, he had to go and be in therapy all the time. And we had, I don't know why, why we didn't. Because most of the time we were at school, and then, and then the car would always be with dad at work, even though we had two cars. Well, it wasn't our car because one of the cars that we had was the shop car, the farm's car, and Dad drew that blue truck everywhere. Huh. Dad was a mechanic for how many years there? For a while. That's all I ever knew my dad doing was mechanic work. He was a pretty good mechanic, fixing tractors and going out there and engines and stuff like that. You know, easy stuff. And he decided to when the com the computers started going in the in the cars, um, he did he decided to go ahead and take that class that they offered him. He took it, but he didn't like it. Z, he'd rather do hands on stuff. Maybe that's that form of autism or ADHD or I don't know. He just always wanted to do that. Well, so yeah, let me get back to the point. I know I don't have a piece of paper here, you know, with the columns, and maybe that's why they have the outlines and stuff that you do to, to keep you at point. And I really wasn't really good at that. I've always been quiet. 
the main reason why I had to be quiet is because I'm supposed to have been the weak link at the house. The weak, the weak link, the weakest link. And so I had to do whatever I was told to do. Because that's what I was supposed to do. I'm the oldest. I have to. I had the responsibility to do, you know, to ease it for the other three. Yeah, my mama, my mom, my grandma, and my mom. Well, my grandma became a widow right before my mom got married, and so. But uh, my other grandma, okay, let me get my grandma straight. Okay. Grandma Evelyn and mom, my mom, are, you know, they're kin. And so uh, grandma Evelyn and mom, you know, apparently they were always at each other's throat. When Papa Herschel died, you know, Mom, Granny had a, or Mama, Mama Evelyn had had the, you know, they lived on a property that all it had was electricity, had a well, yeah, for fresh water, but that's about it. They had an outhouse, and then the electricity, and that was it. My Mama Evelyn, she cooked on a, on a. Um, wood stove and they had a wood furnace and my grandpa built the house uh, uh the property my mom she, they were going to try to knock the house down but they they couldn't because they didn't know if it had lead, lead paint on it or, or something because it was made in the 30s 30s 40s no, and it was made in the 30s. Because I think Mama and Yeah, Mama Evelyn and, and um and Grandpa Herschel, they they married in the in the thirties. All I do know is when what my grandma said, she's thirty years older than my mom. And then there's a, a family joke around there. My grandma Geneva, her first husband was my great grandpa. Yeah, that's how weird my family is. For real. So my grandma Geneva's first husband was my great grandpa. So they had one child who became my full uncle. <laughs> that's my that's my jump joke. Okay. After uh, Grandma Geneva became a widow, she married a widower, and he became a grandpa, and she was. In her 20s, early 20s, yeah, something like that, early 20s, and she had eight kids by um, Grandpa Lindsay. That's not his last name, it's not Lindsay, but that goes to my husband's grandpa, but that's another, another completely different thing, but that Lindsay... Grandpa Paul Lindsay was actually my mama's cousin through the Thomases. <laughs> See, everything gets all complicated. Everybody's all family. Like, everybody's all family. And that was the running joke between mama and, and grandma Evelyn is they have the same mother-in-law. <laughs> and so, because that's the also what happened when 
my mom and my dad got married. They had to bring her, Grandma Geneva, there and said they're no kin. Because, you know, how close it was. Because, of course, Grandma, uh, Mama had a uh, put down of who your grandparents are. Even though it was a step grandmother that was a lot. What well, was a step grandma? Yeah, that was a lot. And so that was the running joke. And the uh, doing the family research and all. You know, it kind of does kind of twist and turn and. It's so weird how when you go through a family tree, we got a lot of knots in it. And the knots twist and overlap and flip and it's weird. And especially when you got one of them, one ancestor that her maiden name was Thomas and she married a Thomas, but they were no kin at all. But that was like back in 18, what, 1830 or something? Something like that. Yeah, well, uh, apparently my great grandmother was uh, on my dad's, on my mom's side, was a Thomas. And I hate to say my mom and dad's, I mean, my papa's, papa Herschel's last name is because. I tried it once in a, in a room full of these little kids, these little girls, and they started laughing and, and making fun of it because of one single word, which is just another word for a chicken. And apparently, it, the last name was named after a chicken. Or was it Hey Cuddy? It was, uh, it gets that last name stuff. Oh, I tried that too for a while. It gets all, all everything gets complicated. Huh. I'm talking about complication. Oh, talk about it. My husband's folks. Boy, mine was, thought mine was bad and then having the family joke of mom. Uh, mom and my grandma having the same mother-in-law. What about my husband's folks? Her, his grand, his grandpa and grandma had the same grandmother. <laughs> so that was really fun. So apparently, you know, we did a lot of the English thing. And yeah, royalty, the English you know, lines that they do. Yeah, I'm just, I know, it's just, what are we talking about? What are you doing? I mean, I don't know. I'm just, stories, entertainment. That's all I ever do, really. Outside, it looks kind of kind of dark and everything. There's a cloud right above it. I really should be, you know, cleaning up around here a little extra. All these little mon monsters. Avashni, she has a stomach ache. Bad, bad stomach ache. Vashna Narada is over here by the door. And then Donnie, he's over on the door. I don't see um, Con or Rosie. And then the other two kittens, uh, Martha Jones and um, Pele, they're outside with their mama. Tortoise is somewhere. And I think those um, 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 honeymoons are about to run out. Drunk honey, ate honey buns and milk. Called again today at the, the snack. Still no snack. 
and one of the uh, the little babies peed in my purse. That was not good. Don't mind things. Don't mind, you know. I got to work with what I got. A lot of when mother-in-law was a lot alive, she thought I wasn't doing my potential. And we would, that's why we would lock horns all the time. Well, she was a fall thing. She was a Taurus, and then I'm over here and I'm a Capricorn, and and so of course we're gonna lock horns just like me and my mama always locked horns. My mama always thought I wasn't doing right either. And so we would lock horns. And that's the complaints that we always had. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. Well, I tried. Only reason why, after I got out of college, is because I worked for Frank. That's what, how I got the job and stayed with the job for four years and worked my way. Got a college degree and everything and uh, worked in biscuits. I don't know how long I did biscuits. Got to uh, be there every morning making the homemade biscuits every morning. Then I, hired, then I trained somebody else to do it and I moved away to prep and then I could go, you know, get, uh, I could go later to work and then at four, four o'clock and stuff. So I worked in prep and then I got put on count on line and then I became breakfast line. I could do the breakfast. I can do the lunch. I can do the, would have had the hand like the broiler, you know, <laughs> that broiler was really something that was gas broiler. I had to twist the manager's shoulders to twist the, um, a tray liner, twist it, light it, stick it in there, and turn it on <coughs> for the boiler. And that's how we uh, did it. That the Burger King that was here, the building was made at least in the 50s. Yeah, I think it was one of the first Burger Kings in town. That, that Burger King was kind of interesting. It actually had, instead of these little bitty eating spots, it actually had a full, what, 10, 15 tw tables on the other side. Yeah, what's really weird is in the parking lot back, uh, back in the 70s, Pizza Hut was there. <laughs> and they moved the building to Pizza Hut. I mean, you had the high school, then you had Burger King, then you had Pizza Hut, and then behind it was a Safeway, which is now was a big star, and then, and that was all, that was just in, right there, and then of course still had the, 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 the car wash, still had it there, and the laundry mat. And then across the ro road, you had that strip mall. Then you had those buildings, you had that one building, uh, with a, and then that little gas station there, and then further halfway across the parking lot going west, there was another gas station and a little strip mall. And, and of course, that strip mall when I was growing up was Walmart. Little bitty Walmart 70 on Highway 70. I always thought that everything was good on the highway because that's the way they did for um, when I was working at Walmart. That's or at the portrait studio. That's how I would remember because the Smith's Walmart was always on Highway 70, so that's what I thought. And when Walmart moved from here on Broadway, moved up here where Kroger is now. 
and I still kept the number and then and they built I remember in the nineties oh yeah, late nineties is uh, when they built the super center. Yeah. About ninety four or five. At least by ninety four. And well apparently Liz was working there before. I do remember her work in when it was at Kroger. And then something happened and she worked at the gas stations while they were working on the super center. And then she went ahead and went back to the went to the super center and that and that's where she worked for 15, 15 years, almost twenty. Until she lost that hand thing. We didn't know how bad oh, she was starting to get. In hindsight, we really didn't know how bad she was getting. All we did know, they had to put a couple of, she had to go to a hospital a few times and she worked hard. My sister really worked hard at, at what she was over when mama was at Kroger she was in the pet department and then she left that to go work at um, the flash market and then when she got fired from the flash market she went back to Walmart and she started in the deli and that's where my mama worked too for a while. I was in the deli. So that's all we ever knew is working in food. I, I started, you know, as soon as I got to college, they stuck us in the, in the food. And what, what the first year I did, um, slop bucket. Then I went, worked my way to dish catcher and then table setter, and then we finally got to be um, waitress, and then I worked my way up to faculty table waitress. Oh, I didn't dress like what I was supposed to, yeah, because we always had a hand-me-downs. And, and you know, me being an artist, I didn't want to mess up my good clothes with paint and stuff on it. Because I, I back then, I was a messy painter. I still a messy painter. And at, sometimes when I come home from school, I know mom, especially when we had days that we, I had to do oil paintings. The, the days we did oil paintings, I... I probably had old paint smeared all over the place, but it was lucky enough that mom knew how to get, get it out because, you know, having a dad that was a mechanic, she could get oil out really good. Yeah, oil. Yeah, in high school, uh, this, uh, this Ross was, you know, heavy in the oil, and so we, a lot of our, how many paintings I got, at least two, two or three, big, well, big is like 32, I think that one painting, the ties, is a, it was a couch painting, and I think the one with the, the gray squirrel is a, it was an even number. And then we did watercolor, so the extreme we had was oil paint and might do a few acrylics and stuff, but we didn't do that that much. And then uh, watercolor. But we did other things. I mean, what we did, we did, it was, she had a potter's wheel there, so. I didn't get on it, but we did, it was 
a couple of weeks or it was a month or so. We did nothing but ceramics. We never got to, you know, push the button on the hill, you know, schedule, see how hot the, it had to be and stuff. I don't even remember much of that. All I remember, I liked to, I liked to use the gray, the red clay more than the gray clay. You know, it was what two or three months we did there. Did ceramics, and then there was a month there that we did nothing but weaving. I mean, she brought a loom in there. And then there was uh, one time we had to dye. We had to, you know, dye. Did a pattern of the dye. That piece was big. I don't. That piece of fabric was big. Then of course we did of all things. We did sketches and drawings and gesture drawings and whatever she had us to do. We had oil paint, oil pastels, soft pastels. A couple of times we had lime, stone, blocks, carving, wood carving, wood prints. I mean, when I took art, just that, and that's just in high school. Yeah, high school, we had a lot of stuff to do. And then with just all of that, we had to learn history art history, you know, all the way down to the primitive, all the way up to whatever it was, 1980s, 88, up to the, that, we had to do all that, we had to learn all the movements and stuff, everything, and what was cool about art at the high school is they gave Miss O. Miss Ross, a, a horse skull. There was a, there's a horse farm right next door, and they had a horse skull. And so Miss, most of our when we did still lives, we had we had that skull in it. <laughs> it's funny just to, how we had to do shading and stuff and control our pencils and stuff in high school. That carried over into my drawing. And uh, all the drawing classes and stuff I took in college. But here's the big the shift. We couldn't use uh, a skull. <laughs> he wouldn't let us. We That's why we had a lot of eggs. Eggs and um, I don't remember the David head. It was, yeah, I think it was just the David head. We couldn't have the full body David statue because of being a religion uh, religious school because I really would would have liked to do the the gesture drawings with the live models and I would have loved to have done that but uh, I didn't get to do that and the drawing and the painting class and then of course we had to learn all the techniques and the drawings and the shadings and uh, in drawing class that's all it was, was shading how to control your pencil your pencil how to control it memory it was memory and and produce a, a piece our final projects were our final our projects that we had for the end of the each semester we had to come up with that was your grade so one year I uh, he wanted us to do a big poster so and he agreed on what subject he had and one year I chose a, a little I think it was about two inches of a reference photo of a swan and I did it all in white and black charcoal and I did it in the size of 36 by 24 and we ha and he only ha gave us um, four 
uh, some, it was like a mat board material that we would use. And that's what I did for that project. And then for painting class, we had to finish, um, we did a, a tree with a, a barn, a barn, a tree, and some fruit in front. We had to do that. That was one of her classes. And then he saw how I was doing so good at portraits and everything. So he decided to show me how to do a portrait. And it took him the full entire class time to show me how to do the portrait. And I, you know, watched him. Yes, he's painting away and I'm standing there watching him and all the techniques and all the colors that he chose and all the palettes and all that. Then I go and get it up to the same point in an hour and a half. That was what was, you know, funny that I could do that. Oh, I can do that. And that was, you got to think, that's in acrylics. And I did a few, a uh, few, a couple of months ago, oil paint. I went back through this book of, you know, portrait painting. And so I was thinking about trying to um, start a portrait painting business again. But nobody around here really cares for anything like that. Nobody around here really does. And plus, I work too fast. I don't slow down enough. And that's what I really should be doing instead of being talking to you or about this rambling, rambling on this stuff. Which, if you know me and you know my stuff, I probably will go over it again. Because it's a very bad bitterness about it. I have very bitterness about things because I can see the pattern happen every single time, same pattern over and over and over again. Maybe that's a part of the uh, autism or ADHD that you do that. You always, you can see the pattern. It's just something that I was trained to do, anticipate. Because always something bad's gonna happen. That's always. Man, that right here hurts. I pull that. I always pull that too tight. I always. There's one specific spot on my forehead. I pull it. I always pull it too tight. The hair too tight. And it starts. It. Oh. Pull my ponytail way too tight when I put the ponytail in. I guess I really should be doing something, but it looks like it's going to be rainy all day. I guess I could go into the in the the paint room and do whatever I need to do to do something. Maybe I was going to finish the book. This book I've been off and on and off and on and off and on reading. The munchkins are finally asleep. They'll be roaming around here in a little while. Yeah, what am I coming up with? I have no idea. This is just an hour of just rambling. I know, an hour of rambling. Yeah, everybody I talk to, well, you need to talk to a counselor. Everybody's going through counseling because the this pandemic, everybody. Yeah, you know, I know it's not for me. It never was. Couldn't even talk to your own family. How can how can anything be? Go talk to some stranger, and you can't even talk to your own family without claws coming out and they jump jump into the, the juggler and 
saying something's going to hurt you or, or something turns into craziness and then oh you hurt somebody's feelings and then oh you you can't get along y'all need to get along stuff you know like it's kind of boring when you hear that all all your life oh you need to get along yeah i could go off on that but you gotta think some some of my folks got so much stuff and anger issues oh yeah i know i got anger issues yeah because i get frustrated because i'm trying to do the best that i can with what i got and i have no support other than me and when i don't show somebody how to do something and then whenever somebody shows me in uh shows me to do something and I go and do it their way then they get so pissed off and mad because I didn't do it right that they go and mess it up that I have to go and redo it what 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 do you think I mean that's the only reason why most of us why we go and get a job besides it's to help people is because we don't have anybody of our family jumping and screwing us around and saying we ain't doing things right when we're literally doing what we need to do and not no judgment still still judgment yeah i'm still bitter that mother-in-law you're not working your potential working 24 7 going to 10 studios and I'm not doing my potential and staying there 12 hours and then I'm I'm still and then when broke still broke I'm working 10 studios 10 hours a day almost 15 hours a day and we have had no money to fix something that is needed at the house when, when we did have the house, when we had Billy's grandma's house. And then the only reason why we, we had to sell it is because of the roof. Ain't nobody going to be able to pay for the roof. Well, that was 10 years ago. Yeah, 10, 11 years ago. Things could have changed. Could it change different than from here, from where it is now? Because just right in after you just sold the house and everything, what happened? You go and you have a heart go and sit down because you're tired, and, and then you pass away on somebody. And that really upset. Billy, and he was way off in Hot Springs in school when he found out that he had to go and go to his mom's funeral. And yeah, Danielle was the only little kid there, and I was trying to help her. And the rich, snobby people over in the corner, uh, they all over there by themselves. The family members were supposed to be the family of Billy and everything. Nobody was consulting Billy. He was outside crying and stuff. And I'm I'm trying to take care of Daniel, Daniel and I'm trying to keep up with him. But he's not wanting to have nothing to do with me because he's ashamed because he done went off with some girl and... You want to get all mixed up. And that, the girl he went for, for all of all things, had problems too. Just, and then, then on top of that, she was chunky. And she had problems. She was living with her parents too. 
responds with me and my parents because I was forced to because I didn't have because my house got stolen off from under me. I didn't have and the and my little part time job. I started losing schools. I had, I had before he decided he wanted to go off over to Hot Springs. I had two freaking jobs. One job, I'm weak as all get out, and then they were expecting me to be running and creepy crawling and running and all that all over that kitchen like. I knew what I was doing and only been working there for, been in there for October, November, December, January, February, March, April. I only started working there like a month in the school year. I was hired mainly besides I had all that, you know, food service thing. That's all I can remember is the food service. They didn't remember I got a bachelor's degree. All they knew is all was in food service. And so I did my best there. And I only got paid once a lump sum in the middle of the month. And we was already in the trailer and a trailer that had I'm I'm getting eaten up by roaches and and nah, don't care. And then my husband getting drunk. Every time I turn around, he was drunk, throwing up, or over to the neighbor and drinking beer and talking and all that stuff. And then he come home staggering, and, and then he goes and gets mad at me because the 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 something pops and all this. And, uh, yeah, he was in stuff that he shouldn't have been in. Didn't know he was until later when he passed away. Didn't know what all kinds of mess he was in. I was just funny. I mean, all he couldn't talk. That was the only disability he had besides his cerebral palsy. And cerebral palsy mainly meant that you don't, he really can't do. Besides, his speech was very bad. He, you have, he really couldn't do, you know, certain things that some people could do. Like he, uh, he really couldn't control his hands. Sometimes he couldn't control his hands, and sometimes he couldn't walk correctly. So he couldn't walk a long distance without. Scuffling his feet, and then his his speech was really bad, and all they ever and then whenever he got to the age that he graduated high school, and he started working, and he was a bus boy, and that's bus mm -hmm. boy, and then he went into cleaning bathrooms and toilets, and he was getting frustrated with that, and then he wanted to be a preacher. He could barely even speak, but he spoke fine to me and normal. To me, I, well, I've been around him since he was four, so it didn't matter if he spoke funny or not. Shoot, I even had a friend that, you know, had cerebral palsy. I stayed with her. And I could understand her too. And so and she was in a wheelchair. And the same thing whenever I went to college, uh, the, uh, a speaker came there. She had the same thing. I didn't think it was any difference. Maybe that's what Jay had too. Even though he, he had learning issues and. A lot of people had that. And it was just supposed to treat them normal. That's all I've ever was trained, told to do. Treat people normal.
Oh, I'm just trying to kill time. Anyway, my name is Loretta Nash, if you hadn't heard. Uh, this is my show. Uh, it's either uh, it's either here. It's Loretta Nash, the Loretta Nash Show, or Lord's Blog. I'm actually going to be posting them on both places. And this is just a random... Thing that I'm doing. I am a professional artist. I might as well go ahead and flat out say that. Because not uh, no, a lot of people don't believe that I ain't. But I am a professional artist. I have been a professional artist for a very, very long time. I took all the art classes and I got an art degree in, of course, studio arts. Even though it was considered that, but it was art. I got a Bachelor of Arts degree in art. That's all it says. I didn't get a, that's what I got. And I have worked as a cashier. No, biscuit cook, line cook, cashier. Uh, did the same thing. And then I worked my way up to shift leader, which is basically management. Then I was a photographer for a while. I worked at an embroidery uh, place, an embroidery place in the back, warehouse in the back for a bit. Uh, I have been a substitute substitute teacher. Uh, I began the substitute in 2012, and I left at in 2021. Uh, mainly because uh, my arthritis started getting bad and the school and I started to get banned from certain schools and my car went down and that's my excuse that's flat out that's my excuse I got started getting banned from schools because apparently there's a rumor going around was a rumor going around that I would say stuff that was scary to the kids and yeah, it's scary about about the frozen snake that we found when I was in second grade, or that the look that the boys in my second grade found and brought it into the school, and because I lived in the country, uh, literally that's one of them, and so everybody got scared of that. I wouldn't say any bad words or anything. Knew better, and then. Um, didn't called a murderer just because I like fencing and by some sixth grader and then because uh, I drew better than somebody they wrote a uh, I mean literally uh, duh I'm an art major hello of course I'm and then I'm like so much older than you of course I'm gonna draw better than you die was like really you wrote a petition to get me out of there because I drew better than you and the mascot of the school is a blue imp and the blue imps were painted all over the walls and everything and then I get a, a petition wrote about me drawing devils and stuff when the mascot's a freaking devil ugh and then at the high school, I got banned from that because I let uh, a senior put handprints all over everything. And that classroom now is, a, uh, is they stripped everything out, but it took them, what, three or four years to strip everything out and rearrange the, the paint, the, the room. Now, I don't even know what it looks like. Maybe when teacher, parent-teacher thing comes here, maybe I'll feel well enough to walk the halls and go visit my daughter's teachers on that day. It'll just take my time. Oh, I don't know. Things are just getting all goofy and weird. Just goofy and weird. 
Yeah, it's a blessing that my dad's letting me borrow my sister's car. Yeah, it's a blessing. I didn't want, I, ever since we, 2021 is when I got my, the clutch fixed, and I've been, always been so scared about driving in New Memphis, so that's why I had me took it to Memphis, because I was afraid it was going to die on me again, and now I don't need my brother, who is the driver of my family, my dad, my mom, my little brother, my dad can't drive anymore. My mom can't even see to drive. And then my little brother doesn't even have a driver's license. And the only person that's left is my brother. And and he's his legs are so swollen he can't even really get into the car. And then I'm getting where I'll, I can I can get in a car and be fine, but after a while I do get Ugh. Sick and all. Nauseous. Well, it's almost time for something. So, my name is Red Nash. And I guess I, I've been going just playing this. Not even going to really edit anything. Just playing. And I used to do this a lot back in the 80s. Maybe I need to go and just go ahead and close my um, watercolors. They should be dry. They, they dried a couple of days ago. I don't know if I want to do watercolors or read finish reading this book or book on the computer or still waiting on someone to come and put Freon in my air conditioning. They probably am not. It took, well, how long it took them to get to fix the, the, the floor. It took them a while to get here just to fix the floor in the kitchen. So anyway, uh, my name is Loretta Nash. This is the Loretta Nash Show or Laura's blog, you can come and visit my artwork anytime you want. I actually have a, right now, I have 101 pictures on my eBay store. Feel free to go to my eBay store and purchase them. I, I am on Redbubble, Zazzle, uh, Fine Arts America. I mean, those are the three I'm going to try to keep up. I am on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, well, yeah, on Twitter, I'm, uh, I use Artist L. Nash on there, and I got my Weeping Angel on there. It's a little fast draw, ink drawing I did a few years ago. It's just a, an angel laying on a, a stone with a flower in her head, hand, and her head's turned and her wings are up. I mean, it looks really cool. I do portraits, original paintings, drawings and paintings. Uh, I'm here in West Memphis, Arkansas. Yeah, I've been through everything. I remember, oh, what do I remember? West Memphis. Mainly, we lived out in Proctor, so really was nothing other than big farm out in, in the middle for 15 miles away have to when you go to get get on the bus at 6 30 and be on the bus until eight o'clock so an hour and a half driving all around the hour and a half on the bus i had to get up at 4 30 in the morning i had to go to bed every year at nine didn't know I had sleep apnea. Really bad. All I remember is by the time I was 10, uh, uh, when I got around 10 or 11, I couldn't cover my head anymore because I couldn't, I couldn't breathe anymore. 
I normally would sleep with my head covered. But apparently that's probably when it get a good storm. Well, it's nice to talk to you for this moment. I'm going to go ahead and log and post this, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.